Hello, this is Father Daniel Kim, Marino Missioner, and welcome to our daily Gospel reading and reflection. Today's Gospel reading is according to St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jarius came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that the power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Tadalithia kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. We come across today in Mark the account of the woman afflicted with hemorrhages, sandwiched in between the story of the synagogue's official, Jairus' sick daughter. The two on the surface might seem completely unrelated, but whenever we come across this technique from Mark, known as intercalation, or in other words, the sandwich method, there are significant narrative threads that ties the two seemingly unrelated stories together that Mark wants us to pay particular attention to. In this particular case, one significant thread is Jesus' direct encounter with those whom the religious and purity laws of the day deemed impure, the dead and those afflicted with hemorrhages. And what finally ties these two stories together is that both the afflicted woman and Jairus' daughter received full health and a new sense of life, both literally and figuratively, after their encounter with Christ. So despite how quote-unquote unclean we may feel due to our sinfulness, let that not be a deterrent for us to meet Christ and in turn receive new life. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel reading and reflection. Please be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Have a blessed and wonderful day. If you enjoyed today's gospel reading and reflection, please make sure that you subscribe wherever you're listening to podcasts. Also, if you know somebody who may find value in today's reading, please make sure that you share it with them. To learn more about how you can support the work that Mary Knoll does around the world, please visit us at maryknollsociety.org. And if you're interested in subscribing to our online magazine, please feel free to visit us at maryknollmagazine.org. Thank you once again for spending your time with us today, and God bless.